Mr. Speaker, the Marape Rosso government is an open and transparent government. This means keeping our parliament and our people informed of key economic developments. I am pleased to provide another economic update this afternoon. There are many economic issues facing our country, and time is short, so I will focus on key international budget and inflation issues since the 2023 uh, budget statement. On, our, on an international update, Mr. Speaker, the international outlook at the time of the 2023 budget was gloomy and uncertain. As expected, the World Bank January economic outlook document slashed its global growth outlook from 3 to 1.7 percent for this year. This is the third worst growth performance in the world economy in the last 30 years, and 2020 was also one of the three worst. The World Bank estimates growth in PNG will be 0.8 of a percent less in 2022 and 2023 this year than forecast just six months ago. Fortunately, we had built much of this into our growth forecasts. And as previously stated, our Papua New Guinea economy is doing so much better than most other countries. Indeed, the new World Bank forecast for PNG of real growth of 3.5% is still more than double the world average, more than double. Despite this bad global news, there is no need to panic. The Marape government was able to steer our country's economy through the dangers of the COVID-19 pandemic. Papua New Guinea will weather this latest storm much better than most other countries. And once again, we will be responsive, responsible, and caring. On our 2023 budget implementation status, Mr. Speaker, PNG's financial accounts for 2023 opened on the 9th of January. Now it's time to implement our historic 2023 budget. This year, we will see the highest level of government expenditure in our country's history, 24,567 million kina. All of this within a responsible program of budget repair and reconstruction, which will see Papua New Guinea return to a budget surplus target date of 2027 and the start of reducing our country's debt. Let me highlight some key expenditure priorities as we implement the Pangu platform from the 2022 election. Infrastructure expenditure will increase from 4,668 million kina in 2018 to 9,796 million this year, more than doubling. This is also being delivered with more local content and more local job opportunities. Within that capital budget of 9,796 million, PNG's public investment program or PIP component has increased from 2,041 million 
in 2018 to 6,615 million this year, as I mentioned a little earlier this afternoon at question time. This is an extraordinary increase of over 220 per cent. The Marape Rosso government is the infrastructure government. Responsible investments in physical capital to support growth in our economy. We are also supporting major increases in human capital spending. Our health funding will reach 2,311 million this year, a 34% increase since 2021. Education will receive 1,650 million kina, a 51% increase from 2021. Law and justice will reach 1,787 million kina, a 41% increase from 2021. This is supporting the police recruitment campaign. Wasn't it great to see so many of our young people apply in January this year? Over 18,000 applications. We have committed increased salary funding for a steady 5% increase in the numbers of teachers and doctors and nurses through to 2027. And then a 10% increase each year after that. Just have a look at our 13 year plan. Making sure that our new schools and hospitals will have the necessary staff. The economic sector will receive 989 million kina, a 46% increase from 2021, with a much greater focus on supporting our farmers and agriculture and SMEs. Funding for provinces will increase to 5,138 million kina, a 30% increase from 20. 21, giving our good governors more resources to implement their key activities at the decentralized level. The major challenge for the 2023 budget is now ensuring that this record level of funding is spent well and benefits our people. There is much work, much hard work ahead for all of us to ensure that this occurs. The 2023 budget is being delivered with a budget repair of a one billion reduction in the deficit. A low cost financing strategy which has lowered debt interest costs from 6.5% to 4.2%, thereby generating interest cost savings of 1,353 million kina in 2023 alone. And all in the context of a tough global environment with many countries expected to fall into recession, whilst PNG grows at double the world rate. Our country is doing better than most because of the good economic policies of our Marape Rosso government, guided by the Pangu vision of leaving no district or person behind. Do not believe the lies of social media or some of those sitting on the other side. Our 2023 household assistance package. Mr. Speaker, despite the good economic news looking forward, we must remember that PNG has, frankly, some of the worst social indicators in the region. Too much poverty and living standards for most of our people that simply are not high enough. This government knows the cost of living pressures facing families 
around our nation. For the first time in PNG's history, the Marape government developed a package to help address some of those pressures, 587 million in 2022, 590 million kina in 2023, a total of 1,177 million kina in assistance to our households and assistance to our people. No other government has ever delivered such a household assistance package. Mr. Speaker, I am pleased that the IRC has written to all employers with new tax schedules applying from the 1st of January this year. This is providing tax cuts of up to 63 kina per fortnight for all those earning 20,000 kina or more for 2023. As mentioned in the newspapers, our dailies, Nesfan estimates this will benefit over 98% of their members, most of them in the younger age group. From the 1st of January this year, we are also continuing for another six months the removal of all excise taxes on fuel. This will save 61 toya per litre of petrol costs and 23 toya per litre of diesel costs. From the 1st of January this year, we are also covering the costs of social project fees in 2023. For example, a family no longer has to pay the project fee of 220 kina for each of its children attending secondary schools. This program helps ensure that relief gets out to the furthest parts of our country. The cost of living relief is greatest for those most in need those families with the most mouths to feed while letting their children attend school rather than work in the gardens. Responsible, caring, budgeting. The Marape Rosso government supporting families in ways never before experienced in Papua New Guinea. On inflation, the National Statistics Office, NSO, has released its estimates of inflation for the September quarter of 2022. The NSO estimates inflation over those three months was 1%. This is half the inflation rate of 2% for the three months of the June quarter of 2022. Mr. Speaker, the government keeps a very close eye on inflation. It knows that some key items have had very high price increases. This is why we introduced a 1,177 million household assistance package to help deal with some of these cost of living pressures. The good news is that the overall current level of inflation of 6.3% is below, is below PNG's long-term average rate of 7%. The Treasury and the Central Bank, along with international institutions, are predicting the inflation rate will be below 6% this year and fall towards 5% next year. Mr. Speaker, this means we are not expecting expecting this year. Once again, beware the funded scare campaign by social media and the so-called PNG empty tank. These inflation figures are gathered by the NSO across many areas of the country and go into detail on over 120 items and services. As a responsible government, we will continue to closely monitor inflation levels. 
If things get worse, we will look at options to do more within the context of sustainable budget repair. Our international engagement. Mr. Speaker, one of the great strengths of the Marape Rosso government is its willingness to engage constructively and honestly with the international community. I have had the honour to have had three good discussions with Australian Treasurer Jim Chalmers already in 2022 and 2023. These discussions include shared economic and trade opportunities, such as labour mobility and good, cheap financing options. On the International Monetary Fund Programme, Mr Speaker, I am pleased to foreshadow to this Parliament that PNG stands ready to enter into a funded programme with the International Monetary Fund or the IMF, our first programme in nearly 20 years. We commenced this partnership back in 2019. We knew the IMF were critical for restoring international confidence in PNG's economic management. We saw them as a source of transparency and expertise. This engagement was also important for the 1.2 billion kina in cheap funding they provided to us in 2020 to deal with the then 20% fall in our revenues due to the COVID-19 pandemic. All countries were also assisted by the IMF with an increase in quotas in 2021. We now stand ready to engage in a program that will likely contribute 310 or possibly 614 million kina this year to support our budget repair and a total of up to 3,250 million kina over the next three years. Importantly, agreement to this program is also vital for securing support from other countries. Without a program, Australian legislation would require the 1,800 million kina we received just in December last year actually having to be repaid now and little prospects of success for the request of 1,500 million kina this year reflected in our financing plan. We will also approach Japan and other partners, including the World Bank, the ADB, for support and they are all linked to the IMF program. The alternative to this, of course, is going back to expensive commercial loans and, of course, being able to borrow significantly less than what we are currently doing today. The guiding principle for engaging with the IMF has been support for the Marape Rosso government's economic reform program. The IMF are extremely satisfied with our program of economic repair and reconstruction. They are also pleased with the progress we have been making on good governance reforms, especially those around the Independent Commission Against Corruption. They are keeping us honest, pushing our institutions to release more transparent procurement data. They are also working closely with us on reform of our monetary and foreign exchange rate practices. We are sure they will welcome and respect our own local expertise provided through PNG's own independent advisory group on the central bank reforms. There have been hiccups along the road, yes, and I expect there will be hiccups in the future. Overall, however, it has been a productive partnership. 
And we must, on occasions, take a hard-headed approach to our national interest, including linked funding support. And like all negotiations, this will require some give and take on both sides. At the end of this statement, members of parliament, I have attached details on the program for this parliament. This covers the details of the loan terms and expected disbursement schedule. It includes all of the quantitative and qualitative conditions for the first 12 months. We have 18 of those. And this is part of our rolling three-year program. I will continue to provide regular updates to the IMF on this IMF program, including any updated conditions. And I welcome parliamentarians to a briefing at our Treasury to go through the program and would hope we can organize a broader meeting with the IMF with those of you that have time and might be interested during their next visit to Papua New Guinea. So I commend this program to the House. For good health in 2023, Mr. Speaker, at this time, I must also note the tremendous loss to the country of the sudden death of Sir Wilson Kamit. Sir Wilson was the first Bank of PNG governor following the reforms of Sir Makere Morauta. He held the position from 1999 to, 2000, to 2009. These were good years economically for our country. I have been honored to have had him as one of the three members of our independent advisory group on modernizing the current Central Banking Act. He has made a great contribution to our country, and I was greatly saddened by his sudden passing. My sincere condolences to Lady Winifred, his family, and colleagues. I would also like to thank Mr. Jim Hagan, our key contact within the Australian Department of Treasury, for all of the support he has provided to our country and the wider Pacific over many, many years, and wish him well in his retirement. In conclusion, in conclusion, Mr. Speaker, New Island is a matrilineal society. During the Christmas break in the first two months of this year, I had met with over 4,000 mothers and youths to listen to their views on priorities for 2023. My clear view is that the Marape Russell government is doing the right things for our mothers, our youth, and our people. There is still a long path to travel before we reach the living standards that our people deserve. But we are taking the right steps forward. A record $24,566,67 million 2023 budget with spending focused on key priority areas, 1177 million kina assisting households with cost of living pressures, budget repair of 1,000 million kina, economic growth policies focused on rural areas delivering double the world average at 3.5%. Inflation moderating to under 6%. Moving to greater economic independence. Working constructively and openly with our international partners. Implementing the Pango vision all within our available resources. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. <laughs>